Hello and welcome to today's lecture on main memory optimizations. In the last lecture, we have discussed about the different the organizations of main memory, different types of main memories that are used and how they are organized. Just like we have discussed various cache optimization techniques, today we shall focus on various techniques for optimizing the main memory. Now, uh, as we know, one of the very critical bottleneck in high performance uh, processing, particularly when you are trying to interface a high performance processor to the main memory. As we know, dynamic RAM is used as the main memory and that situation has not changed over the years. Although, uh, the static RAM is size of static RAM is increasing, cost of static RAM is increasing, but as main memory dynamic RAM is the uh, uh, choice of the day. Uh, main reason is cost and second reason is high packaging density that is possible in dynamic RAM. You can have a single package with 256 kilobits or more on a single chip. So, this has led to the uh, use of uh, dynamic RAM uh, as the main memory almost in virtually all systems. So, whenever we say main memory optimization, essentially we shall see how we can improve the performance of dynamic RAM memory systems. Uh, 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 this is that performance gap I mentioned and this gap is increasing over the years. Uh, because the processor performance is improving at the rate of 50 percent per year, dynamic RAM performance is improving uh, at the rate of 9 percent per year. So, this gap is increasing, how to bridge the gap? That is the main question and we shall try to address it by using different techniques. Number one technique that is used is to increase the bandwidth, higher bandwidth. That means, the rate at which data transfer will take place between the processor and the main memory, how we can increase that uh, rate, rate of data transfer that is known as higher bandwidth and that can be achieved in three different ways which we shall discuss. One is the use of wider memory, second is the use of interleaved memory and third is the use of independent memory banks. So, these are the three commonly used techniques for increasing the bandwidth of the main memory systems. And after that we shall discuss about advanced dynamic RAM organizations, the many innovations have taken place to improve the organizations of dynamic RAM uh, with the objective of making it faster uh, and, uh, uh, and so that the perform the gap between the uh, processor speed and the rate at which the data can be provided by the dynamic RAM is reduced. So, uh, one obvious way to improve main memory performance is to have a higher memory bandwidth. By that we mean uh, this memory uh, increasing the memory bandwidth that, that will bring, bring in more uh, bytes per unit time from the memory up to the hierarchy. So, first we shall focus on wider memory. Uh, wider by wider, wider memory we mean we, we shall increase the we shall uh, uh, make the memory bus wider. Normally, you know the width of the bus is same as the size of the wards, uh, ward of a, of a processor. So, if it is a 32 bit processor, width of the bus is 32 bit, if it is a 16 bit processor, width of the bus is 64 bit. Now, we would like to make a wider bus say may be uh, that will transfer more number of words uh, and, uh, the <coughs> and, and that can be done uh, to improve the performance. Since the CPU needs one word at a time, there needs to be a multiplexer between the CPU and cache. However, uh, as we try to do so, I mean increase the width of the uh, main memory bus, you will see that you will require some multiplexer because the processor in any case will need in terms of words, it will fetch uh, word by word because the cache memory, main memory 
uh, bus is only in terms of uh, words. <coughs> so, uh, we can explain it this way. Normal situation we have got your CPU here, there is a bus and this bus is connecting to the cache memory and bus with the same as the word size and here also you have got another bus that is connecting to the main memory. and having the same width of the bus. So, uh, this is the word size bus, this is also word, word size bus. Now, what we are trying to do is to have a wider bus between cache and main memory. So, CPU will be there and having the word size bus. and here you will have your cache memory. Then you will, you will require a, a multiplexer between this bus which will transfer in terms of words and, uh, and a wider bus that will be coming from the memory. So, here you will be having a multiplexer, multiplexer can be uh, 2 to 1 or 4 to 1 depending on the width of the main memory. So, main memory is now is having wider bus and uh, this bus will transfer uh, at a much I mean more number of bits will be transferred. So, uh, if this is a 64 uh, bit this can be 128 bit or 256 bit depending on the width that there is a choice we can use. So, uh, let us consider how the miss penalty is reduced because of the use of wider bus. So, for that we assume that one memory clock cycle is needed to send the address that means, the CPU has to send the address and that address will, will the, to send that address associated with other uh, I mean along with other control signals that will require one cycle. Then 20 memory cycles for each DRAM access that means, the whenever data transfer is taking place between the and this is the main memory dynamic RAM after receiving the address it will take 20 cycles not one cycle, but 20 cycles and uh, one memory clock cycle to send the data. That means, uh, per one memory clock cycle data can be sent uh, from the, uh, uh, from the uh, after reading it from the main memory to the processor. So, that is what is being shown and we have assumed that uh, the uh, we are using a block size of 4 words, not really words uh, that means, the cache memory is having 4 uh, word block. That means, you have to transfer even if this uh, word, if it is word size you have to transfer 4 words uh, before you can uh, provide control to the CPU even in this situation. So, in such a situation uh, whenever you have got one word wide uh, DRAM bank uh, that is transferring between the cache memory and main memory. Let us see what is the miss penalty for standard memory first uh, one clock cycle that is needed to provide the address, then four clock cycles in the 20 that is required to transfer four words of data from the main memory to the cache. So, uh, four word four that, that will be required that means, 1 plus 4 into 20 for transferring from the main memory to the cache and after that uh, you know you will require four more cycles to transfer uh, from the uh, to, to, to write it into the cache memory. So, this is the total time you will require 85 cycles memory cell clock cycles 1 uh, plus 4 into 20 plus 4 into 1. So, 85 memory uh, bus cycles bus clock cycles are needed in the standard situation. Now, let us assume that we have made the uh, main memory bus too, too wide, too wide means this is 
uh, say if it is 64 bit, this is 128 bit, not 256, this is too wide. That means, we can transfer uh, at a time uh, two words simultaneously and by doing that, you can see the how the reduction in mis I mean mis mispellality occurs, mispellality occurs. So, in this case, you will require 1 plus 2 into 20, because you are sending uh, two words at a time. So, you will require two cycles, so 2 into 20 and again uh, two cycles uh, of one clock cycle that is for transferring the data to the cache. So, this is the miss penalty that is required 1 plus 2 into 20 plus 2 into 1 that is 43 memory bus clock cycle. So, by having wider memory we can see uh, it is roughly I mean there is a speed, speed up of about I mean close to 50 percent 85 by 43 that is very close to uh, I mean maybe 100 percent increase in performance you can say the, the transfer rate becomes double almost double. So, this is the miss penalty reduction uh, by using a two wide bus if you make it four wide uh, then uh, the, the, then this will be 1 into 20 and this will be again 1 into two, uh, two 1. So, still uh, improvement is possible but uh, you know more wide uh, wide is the bus the, it is very costly to implement that is why the width of the main memory bus is not made very wide maybe two wide or at most four wide. Now, let us consider another situation where we can use interleaved memory. What do you really mean by interleaved memory? Uh, here as we know main memory consists of multiple memory chips. Therefore, each chip could be made to serve part of a request at, at any time. So, what we are trying to exploit here? Although you are considering a single memory system, we know that memory system comprises a large number of memory chips. So, each chip may be may provide only 1 bit or 8 bit at most, but not more than that. So, why not exploit that and that means, several memory chips are there and uh, that parallelism can be exploited and how we shall see. Uh, and for example, this is the typical memory bank. Here it has been assumed that your memory chip is organized as 2 to the power 16 into 1. So, this is the this is how it is organized. So, it is the memory chip is bit organized. So, what you are doing you are transferring the address simultaneously to all the memory chips, the chip select signal to all the memory chips. So, that means all of them will get ready uh, at the same time to provide data on the data bus. So, this is a 64 k memory bank of 8 bit word. Now, this can be extended, this idea can be extended to realize uh, multiple memory bank uh, in interleaved memory system, interleaved main memory system. So, here what has been done, done the, the instead of having uh, a single bank, we are having the CPU that is interacting with the cache memory. Now, between cache memory and main memory, we have got several banks. So, this is bank 0, this is bank 1, bank 2, bank 3. So, let us assume we have got 4 banks. What is being done here? The cache memory will, will provide, will, will apply the address and other control signals simultaneously to all of them. So, since it will be supplied simultaneously to, them, to, to all of them, they will require uh, 20 clock cycles to, uh, to get ready, I mean to provide data that is the access time as we have seen access time is 20 clock cycle. So, after 20 clock cycle all the memory banks will be ready. Now, after that you can transfer one after the other you read from memory bank 1, then you read from memory bank 2, then you read from memory bank I mean memory bank 0, then memory bank 1, then memory bank 2 and then memory bank 3. So, this one after they are ready together you will transfer one after the other that is what is being done in a interleaved memory. 
So, uh, how the misspellant is reduced? So, in this case you can see you require one clock cycle to supply the address uh, to send the address, then 20 clock cycles are required uh, for the memory banks to provide data. Then of course, you will read one after the other, so you will require 4 clock cycles and total of 25 memory bus clock cycles are needed to transfer uh, the, uh, the, uh, the 4 words to the uh, main memory uh, to, to, uh, to the cache. So, you see the reduction in this case is 25 uh, memory uh, bus clock cycles instead of 85. So, instead of 85 clock cycles in the normal, normal clock uh, normal situation you require only 25 memory cycles. So, there is a significant improvement in the performance you can say speed up is roughly 4 times. So, uh, you can use this interleaved memory. So, this idea can be extended uh, to have independent memory banks. So, this is a generalization of the concept of interleaving. So, multiple memory controllers can be used, multiple banks can be used, multiple buses can be used. So, like having multiple memory systems as if you have got multiple memory systems and each of them will work independently and uh, in simultaneously par in parallel to provide uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the to respond to the uh, CPU coming and each memory system can itself be composed of interleaved memory banks. So, what we are considering here, we are considering independent memory banks, each of them can be interleaved inside and each such memory has a distinct use uh, for example, in case of input out input devices where you will require independent memory banks uh, from where uh, it will be read simultaneously, one of the, uh, simultaneously they will be uh, responding to the uh, request from the processor. So, uh, uh, this is the concept of independent memory banks. Now, I mean uh, the dynamic RAMs, the way they are organized is shown here, uh, they are organized in the form of dual inline memory modules. So, those, those are known as DIMMs, D I M M, DIMMs used con usually contain 4 to 16 DRAMs. So, you can see here you have got a 4 into uh, one, uh, one uh, DRAM chip that provides you 4 into 64 uh, kilobyte. So, in this way you can have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8 into 4, 32 bit wide bus you can have and these DIMMs are used uh, for realizing uh, nowadays uh, in your uh, desktop and uh, uh, servers and workstations as the main memory system. <coughs> so, each D DRAM, I mean each DIM, uh, each uh, RAM, RAM will provide 4 bit uh, and then you can have 4 to 16 DRAMs on a single uh, printed circuit board uh, providing uh, the uh, I mean 8 bytes wide uh, bus for the desktop and then you can have several such DIMMs in your system. Now, uh, we, uh, 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 we have seen how you can uh, enhance the info, uh, uh, I mean enhance the uh, data transfer rate. Now, we shall consider advanced DRAM organizations, dynamic RAM uh, has gone through a number of innovations to provide uh, less and less access time or in other words to uh, provide uh, data at a, at a faster rate and we shall consider them uh, one after the other. <coughs> the first technique that has been used is to have SRAM CAS. Uh, use of a, a static RAM cache memory built in as part of the dynamic RAM. So, SRAM cache was the traditional way to per improve the performance of DRAM. So, basic DRAM is a, uh, dynamic RAM is unchanged since the first uh, RAM chip was enhanced. So, uh, how it is being done let me explain by uh, drawing a diagram and how the uh, static RAM is incorporated as part of the dynamic RAM. 
So, as we know we have got column decoder, I am not drawing the entire uh, DRAM uh, memory chip, but part of it highlighting the incorporation of static RAM. This is your column decoder, then you have got your uh, this is where you have put your uh, 514 bit into 4, uh, 500 into 500 sorry into 4 bit SRAM. This is the static RAM 500 into 4 bit that is actually available on a single row and then you have got the other things like uh, the typical functionalities that is required in static RAM and dynamic RAM, sense amplifier, then and column write select signal and then here you have got your DRAM array. So, DRAM array is 2048 into 512 into 4. So, this will be 512. So, this is the this is how the DRAM is organized in two dimensional array from where it goes to the sense amplifier and column line select and from there a particular a single row you can see you have got 2048 rows 2k rows and one row is transferred and that is available in the form of a cache in the, uh, in the uh, uh, static RAM. So, this is from here it goes to the uh, external world. So, here is your I O, I O control and Tata latches. So, this is for external control and and of course, he will require the uh, row decoder here. So, the, ten, the, the address A 0 to A 11, A 0 to A 10, 11 bit address comes here. Similarly, here the, uh, the, the, uh, the uh, you will have the um, column address latch. So, main idea here is what is happening instead of uh, read, reading it from the dynamic RAM, you are latching one row uh, here and then uh, by changing the column address, you are reading it, I mean uh, uh, you are transferring it to the, uh, to the, uh, to the, uh, the cache memory. So, that will make it faster uh, because you know uh, if, uh, because once you have transferred to this uh, static RAM, the, the, uh, the access time will be much lower compared to reading it from the dynamic RAM. That is the basic idea and uh, so you have got a small RAM and SRAM acts as a cache holding the last line. So, because of the principle of uh, you know locality that uh, the uh, you will be reading sequentially from sequential address locations and the do which are available in your uh, this in a single row. So, from that single row you will read one after the other. Uh, now, extension of that idea is to have cache DRAM. So, instead of a small DRAM you will be having a large static RAM at, uh, say here you have added only uh, 512 into 4 bit. So, that means 2 kilobit instead of that you can have 64 kilobit. So, larger cache can be used and which will really act as uh, you know cache that means, first you will transfer from the dynamic RAM to this large static RAM and that large static RAM uh, from the large static RAM you will read it uh, uh, one after the other as long as it is available there. So, the way the cache memory works you transfer from the main memory to the cache memory and from cache memory it is transferred to the processor in the same way it will work only difference here is that from dynamic RAM it is going to the static RAM and from static RAM 
it will be read by the external world. So, this is the Cass DRAM uh, concept that is used in many situations, but this enhanced DRAM this is very popular. Now, uh, that enhanced DRAM it operates based on the idea of first page mode. So, allow row to re remain available for multiple column accesses as I mentioned and holds row data in sense amplifier for longer period. So, that sense amplifier uh, uh, in this case is acting as a uh, kind of cache. So, we are not using this static RAM, we are not using it, but what we are doing? We are uh, transferring one row of data and the sense amplifier at the output of the sense amplifier one row is available and which will act as a kind of latch. So, in this case without using static RAM you are able to uh, read it, but in this case you have to restrict to uh, reading from the, uh, at the from the output of the sense amplifier and by changing the uh, by holding the uh, row address uh, select signal while changing the column address select signal. So, the same amplifiers function is cast for DRAM rows. So, multiple uh, column address select signals can access multiple words in the same row. Again this exploits spatial locality via successive accesses to the same row. So, basic idea is same, but in this case you are not using uh, static RAM. Then another concept is first page mode shorten cycle time by allowing processor to use the same row address, but a different column address as you have discussed. So, this removes one step of addressing sequence, one step of addressing means we have seen normally uh, a row address is uh, uh, provided, then column address is provided only after both addresses are available data is read from the dynamic RAM, but in this case only row address is provided then by changing only the column address you will be reading one after the other. So, that is the difference and the data of a single row is referred to as page and extended data out and data out uh, allows processors to overlap data read cycle with the right of the next column address. So, in this case we are overlapping operations uh, data read with the right for the next column address. So, EDO results in savings of approximately 10 nanosecond for each read within a single page. Single page means in this case we are referring to one row and if we look at the uh, this timing diagram this will be clear. As you can see uh, this is the row address select signal and that has been uh, I mean kept stable. Now, you are changing the column address select signal and you can see this is the row address when the row address uh, actually it is row address strobe not the select. So, row address strobe signal will latch this address in the row address buffer and the column address strobe signal will latch the column address buffer in the, this address in the column address buffer then the data will be available after some time. So, this data would, you are reading this data and this data out and the, at the same time you can have another address that bit column address that can be uh, read uh, by using activating another uh, column address stop signal. So, this data reading and column address generation is over getting overlapped and uh, which is essentially uh, lead to the data to be read in the next clock cycle. So, you can see this is this is how by using EDO that extended data out this allows overlapping of uh, data read cycle with the write to the next column address. So, write to the next column address and the data out both are taking place simultaneously. <coughs> now, you can also use burst mode in the ADO RAM timing. So, in this case basic idea is you have generated a row address and that row address strobe signal has latched it that remains in the buffer, then you will keep on changing the column address one after the other. So, here the column address you have uh, applied and again you will, you will subsequent uh, column address select signals are generated 
and uh, a burst of data is coming out one after the other in each cycle uh, from the same row and that data is getting transferred. This is the basic idea of burst mode of EDO dynamic RAM timing. So, this will also make uh, dynamic RAM faster. Now, let us consider synchronous uh, dynamic RAM, SDRAM, which is nowadays used in almost all uh, workstations, desktops and everywhere. As we know, traditional dynamic RAMs are asynchronous. What do you really mean by asynchronous? By asynchronous, we mean what, what happens in case whenever we access traditional dynamic RAM, the, the, the address will be address along with different control signals will be made available to the dynamic RAM chip that means row address strobe, column address strobe and various things. And after that the RAM chip within the RAM chip various operations will take place. There are you, you, you have seen there are uh, very large capacitances that uh, that uh, uh, various large capacitances present inside the dynamic RAM chip that uh, that those bit lines and uh, various uh, uh, other uh, I mean uh, row lines and so those uh, cap capacitances get charged then there will be a sense amplifier that sense amplifier will sense the data and that will be that will be transferred through the I O to the outside world. Now, this operation will take some time what the CPU does during this period. So, there is some multiple wet cycles uh, I mean you will require multiple wet cycles before you can read data. For example, 20 clock cycles as I have told is the access time for traditional dynamic RAM. That means, the CPU will wait has to wait 20, wet, 20 clock cycles to read one word of data from the dynamic RAM. So, that means, if you are reading it successively one after the other, if you have to spend 20 clock cycles, then another 20 clock cycles and so on. So, because it is taking place in a asynchronous manner. Now, in synchronous DRAM, this is overcome by providing an external clock. So, access is synchronized with the help of this external clock. So, the processor or you may call it master issues the instruction and address information to the dynamic RAM. Then dynamic RAM responds after a set number of clock cycles. So, here it is synchronized that means, the, 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 the processor will generate address and clock cycles at a at which is synchronized by a clock. Then uh, there is a kind of synchronize uh, that external clock will do the synchronization after fixed number of clock cycles the, uh, <coughs> the, uh, the RAM will be ready. So, the processor must does not in this case what happens the processor or the master need not wait. So, can do other tasks while the SDRAM is processing the request. So, the difference between the previous case and in this case key in this case is earlier the processor was continuously checking the status of the dynamic RAM whether it is ready or not and uh, wait cycles were being generated. But in this case the, the processor is no longer waiting for the data it is it is simply after providing the address and control signals it gets busy uh, in other things. So, it can do uh, it can perform other operations or tasks in the meantime the static SD RAM will that dynamic RAM will get ready and SD RAM employs a burst mode using a mode register to set up a stream of data to be synchronously fed onto the bus. Then after that uh, set number of times the SDRAM synchronous DRAM will provide data in the burst mode. Burst mode, burst mode means in each clock cycle one word, one word, one word in this way the data will come and this is again synchronized by the, uh, by the clock. Now, uh, here we are making use of a register known as mode register. What is the role of this mode register? Mode register is set up 
to uh, set up a stream of data to be synchronously fed. So, mode register will contain two information. Will you can the user can um, you can actually set the mode register, which will decide what is the uh, latency. That means how much clock cycles, how many clock cycles. clock cycles the dynamic RAM will require to get ready to provide data and another thing is the um, bus size, how many words to be transferred in a single bus. So, these two can be set uh, uh, with the help of this mode register and uh, then a stream of data can synchronously be fed onto the bus. As it is shown in this diagram, you can see here uh, the processor is providing two information, row address and column address with the help of these signals and after that, so sorry this is the asynchronous DRAM timing which I have already explained. Now, let us consider the synchronous DRAM timing. So, uh, the synchronous uh, SDRAM is uh, will send this command read A, this is the address is generated and after that it is wait, it is skipping few clock cycles, this is the no op that means the, none, the it is generating say 3 clock cycles in this case, the latency is 2. So, uh, it will generate these, uh, these clock, these, these uh, these uh, no ops, it will continue to generate no ops after providing this address and then data will be available after a fixed latency. So, this is the uh, column address strobe latency, after this column address strobe signal is obtained, after 2 clock cycles the data will be available. So, this is the let up that after this latency, after 2 clock cycles data is now available and now in this case the bus length has been set to 4. So, you will get 4 words of data from A0, A1, A2 and A3 obviously from consecutive addresses. So, this is how you will, you will transfer data one after the other. So, instead of this asynchronous DRAM timing, I mean the, the way the uh, you are reading one word then another word uh, and for each of them you have to spend 20 cycles. Here you can see initially uh, there is a latency, but that latency is decided. Uh, I mean, um, I mean, is dependent on the cache memory uh, access time. Sorry, dynamic RAM memory access time that you are using, and accordingly you can modify the uh, mode register. So the STRAM has uh, multiple bank internal architecture providing on-chip parallelism. So you may be asking how you are able to provide uh, this one after the other. That is possible because of the use of multiple banks that is provided inside the chip. So, that means here you have got 4 banks and for each bank you are getting one data, uh, I mean one data in, our, in 4 consecutive cycles. So, that is how it is made, it, it has been made faster and obviously, this will lead to faster average, average memory access time. Now, there is another innovation that was provided which is known as DDR SDRAM. DDR stands for double data rate. So, double data rate SDRAM, double data rate synchronous dynamic RAM. In this case, it allows data to be sent twice per clock cycle. So, normally you know you have got a clock, usually data is transfer either by, by using this positive edge or by using this negative edge. One of the edge is used that means on this edge one data is transferred, then uh, on this edge another data is transferred that is the normal DDR uh, that happens, a normal SDR that happens after that initial delay. So, instead of that in case of DDR double data rate SDRAM this allows data to be sent twice per clock cycle. So, you are using leading edge and trailing edge both the edges are used to transfer one order of data. That means, you are transferring data here, this is normal uh, SDRAM. Now, in your uh, DDR SDRAM, 
you will be able to transfer at this age as well as at this age, at this age as well as at this age uh, and also in this age and so on. So, that, that means your data rate uh, is becoming double uh, because you are transferring on both edges. So, this is another innovation that was incorporated in, uh, in dynamic RAM by in, in, and that has helped to uh, provide data at a faster rate. So, uh, this is the typical SDRAM organization, you have got a memory controller and as I mentioned you have got multiple banks. So, here four banks are shown uh, and four banks are getting the, the uh, I mean the the different control signals coming out from the controller and actually this is a very simplified diagram, a more uh, realistic diagram or a more uh, for, a, uh, for a real life process uh, memory that is your that was developed by IBM, IBM 64 MB uh, SDRAM is shown here. Here you have got 14 bit address buffer then you have got uh, different four banks of cell array as you can see this is a cell array 2 mb into 8 here also 2 mb into 8 2 mb into 8 2 mb into 8 so in this way you have got 2 plus 2 uh, 8 mb into 8 that gives you 64 mb megabit uh, of uh, dynamic ram stored and various control signals uh, generator data memory control circuitry and here is your data and IO buffer. So, here you are reading data 8 bit at a time that means, uh, here you have got 8 bit bus for external transfer. So, using this uh, IBM 64 uh, MB SDRAM, you will be able to get 8 bit at a time and <coughs> you can see various pin assignments of this SDRAM you have got uh, A0 to A13 address inputs, then you have got clock input, uh, clock enable signal, chip select signal, read address strobe, column address strobe, write enable and data input output DQ0 to DQ7, DQM, data mask. So, these are the various signals which are shown here uh, for external interfacing. So, uh, this SDRAM uh, is very popular, then you can make uh, that dual in line memory module can be made by using these uh, chips. So, you can see the first synchronous uh, DRAM DIMMs has the same bus frequency for data and address and control. That means, uh, here you are using, uh, I mean not using the double data rate. So, this, this here you are using single data rate on a single edge. So, PC 66 gives you uh, data at the rate of 66 mega, mega hertz, PC 100 gives you at the rate of 100 mega hertz. That means, you will be getting 100 into 8 bit at a time and if you form a uh, from that dim and here uh, PC 133 that will give you 133 mega hertz. So, these dims can be used in parallel to realize the uh, and the 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 uh, memory system, and here DDR1 SDRAM DIMMs that that use that uses double data rate, and this is achieved by clocking on both rising and falling edge of the data strobes, which I have already explained. And again, you have got a different types, different modules PC1 600 that gives you at the rate of uh, 200 megahertz data and strobe but 100 megahertz clock and address. So, data rate is double that of clock and address and control. Similarly, PC 200 uh, gives you two at the rate of two, 266, uh, 266 megahertz clock uh, data and strobe and 133 megahertz clock uh, for address and control and that PC 2700 gives you 330 megahertz data and strobe and 166 megahertz clock and clock for address and control and PC 3 200 gives you 400 megahertz data and strobe and 200 megahertz clock for address and control. Uh, and in addition to that you have got DDR2 SDRAM. So, you are going from one generation to another generation and technology is improving, speed is improving and as you can see here 
uh, these deems are also double data rate uh, and uh, it is starting with 400 megahertz that PC2 uh, series and double, 400 megahertz double data and strobe, but 200 megahertz clock for address and control. So, in this way it goes up to PC2 6400 where you can get at the rate of 800 megahertz data and strobe by uh, and 400 megahertz clock for address and control. So, you can see uh, you have got a variety of DIMMs available nowadays commercially available. These are commercially available DIMMs which you can procure and depending on the speed requirement of your computer system, you can use them in your uh, computer. Okay. Another innovation that was uh, in the dynamic RAM it was the use of Rambus DRAM. So, developed by Rambus. So, it takes standard DRAM as the core. So, inside you have got the standard SDRAM as the core. So, you have got typical DRAM array, you have got the row decoder, column decoder, uh, sense amplifier and various other things that is required in, tip in, a, in a standard dynamic RAM. Uh, but you have got a kind of uh, bus, so which is known as packet switch bus. So, it is provided by a bus interface called a packet switch bus. So, a, a single chip acts like a memory system, it, it can, should not be considered like a memory chip, it is a memory system. That means, lot of control and other functionalities have been built, built in as part of the chip. So, uh, the through the bus. 28 pin bus, it will interact with the processor and uh, it has got 28 pin and various uh, pin, pins which are provided as shown here. The data bus is 18 bit, then RC, uh, that RC 8 bit, RC clock 2 bit, T clock 2 bit and so on. So, you can see uh, you can have up to 300 RDRAMs. Uh, that you can uh, you can have in a single systems, and you can have RDRAM uh, a number of RDRAMs up to 300 RDRAMs can be uh, uh, can, you can have in a single system that can be interfaced to your computer systems. So between sending the address of the request and the return of the data, it allow other accesses over the bus. That means this is another uh, features that is provided in RDRAM. And uh, also internally it does uh, the refreshing. Since you are using dynamic RAM, it will require that uh, refreshing of the memory. That refreshing as you are doing the writing or uh, doing the reading, that time in writing in any case it gets refreshed, while reading also as you read it, it gets refreshed. So, that uh, reading is uh, used for the purpose of refreshing and controller and these are the various components controller and RDRAM modules, 16 bit data and 2 bit parity cycling twice uh, the clock rates and 8 lines for address and control. So, 8 lines for address and control. So, this is the RDRAM memory system that is available and this was adopted by Intel for Pentium and Itanium processors. And this S, this is this Rambus RAM is the main competitor of SDRAM, and it is available in vertical package. That means all pins, that 28 pins available on one side, data exchange take place over those 28 wires, and that width of that is less than 12 centimeter. And bus address, bus address up to 320 RDRAM chips. As I mentioned, I mean I mentioned wrongly as 300, but it is 320 RDRAM chips at a rate of 1.6 uh, gigabits per second. This will be not BB, GBPS gigabits per second. So asynchronous uh, block or also it work in asynchronous block oriented protocol, where uh, the access time is 400 nanosecond, and all then after this uh, access time, it gives you at the rate of 1.6 gigabits per second. And this is the typical uh, RDRAM with the pins, various pins, the heat sink, integrated heat sink. So, it has been found that RDRAM is 
uh, I mean compared to other contemporary standards, RAM bus shows significantly increased latency, heat output because of uh, you know that uh, various control circuits built in as part of the RAM bus RAM, it generates lot of heat. So, there is a long latency, heat output, manufacturing complexity and costs. So, uh, RAM bus ROM is much costlier than the uh, SDRAM and RDRAM requires longer die size, requires to house the added interface uh, results in 10 to 20 percent price premium. So, as I mentioned it is much costlier than as SDRAM. And these are some other issues related to RDRAM, few DRAM manufacturers ever obtained the license to produce RDRAM, those who did uh, license the technology failed to make enough reams to satisfy PC market demand. So, uh, this, the, this means that it is less popular than SDRAM <coughs> and during RDRAM's decline DDR continues to advance in speed while the same line it was still cheaper for RDRAM. So, while RDRAM is still produced today, uh, commercially it is still produced, but few motherboards support RDRAM and between 2002 to 2007 only 5 percent uh, market was captured by uh, RDRAM. So, essentially uh, all we are trying to tell is that SDRAM is the uh, is more popular than RDRAM, although uh, it is being manufactured. So, this is a typical uh, main memory organization here you can see uh, the, the I O bus, this is the processor, this is the processor bus and this is the memory and I O bridges and you have got the uh, uh, read queue, write queue, response queue, scheduler, buffer and here are those various banks, bank 0, bank 1 and DIMMs are connected to realize the memory and I O banks. So, this is the hierarchy that we have already discussed, uh, I mean disk drive, main memory, on chip L2, on chip L1, register file. So, uh, various technologies that are used magnetic, DRAM, SDRAM, main memory is DRAM and bandwidth as you can see uh, 2 gigabits per second, 1.6 we have seen, nowadays it is 2 gigabits per second and latency is 50 nanosecond for main memory compared to 2 nanosecond for uh, on chip L2 CAS and cost is significantly smaller uh, than the, uh, than the, 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 uh, than the CAS memory. So, later in the next, uh, next class I shall discover, discuss about the, the, about another hierarchy, that hierarchy between main memory and the secondary memory which is known as uh, you know that uh, virtual memory system. So, in the next, next lecture we shall discuss about that. So, to summarize we have discussed about uh, the enhancement of main memory, main memory optimization techniques uh, by using wider memory, interleaved memory and also we have discussed about various dynamic RAM. Uh, specific optimizations like the use of SDRAM and, uh, and the RAM bus RAM. So, with this we have come to the end of today's lecture, thank you.